is up, everybody? Today we are talking about CPU. We're talking about maxing out your CPU to the complete max, going further than 100%. Um, if you guys keep up on my Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash killparis, I posted a picture where uh, my CPU is actually at like 126 or something like that. And of course it sounds like absolute garbage when you do that but there's ways to push your CPU really far and then still be able to use the audio from it because when you push your CPU that far you usually get audio dropouts and with a lot of other DAWs it'll actually stop playback but Ableton's so awesome that you can push your CPU to like uh, I don't know as far as you possibly <laughs> want it to granted you can't really hear what you're doing but then you can still export your track without any audio dropouts or anything so uh, just to show you the computer that I'm on here is a uh, it's a 2.16 gigahertz Intel Core 2 Duo. I do have the RAM maxed out at four gigabytes, which still isn't all that much, um, especially for producing music. And I've actually I've used this computer for everything that I've done, um, every EP, everything, and you know playing live and all that stuff. And I've had a lot of issues playing live because I really I. I want it to sound as good as possible and you know as polished to produce as I can and I'm now running into the problem where my computer just can't keep up with my production which I guess it's not a bad thing uh, it's just you know it's time for a new computer so and I'm getting a new computer next week so um, in celebration of that I'm going to show you guys how to uh, how to really max out your CPU and how to get the most out of Ableton so the set that I have here I just have a simple uh, drum kit and it's grouped with a little bit of uh, the sausage fattener and uh, I also have a limiter on here just to keep things nice and neat and then I have uh, this uh, instance of Massive which I'm using Massive because I'm sure if you guys are doing dubstep or electro you at least know what Massive is uh, which it's an amazing synthesizer so we're going to be using that today and this is also grouped and I do that because we're going to have the side chain on this group and if we were to have the side chain on just the Massive uh, we wouldn't be able to do what we're going to do, which is freeze the track. So just be aware of that. Uh, so this is what I have so far. It's just a simple little massive patch, something I made in like a minute. Um, nothing really crazy, but what we're going to do is if we control click on this instance of Massive and do Group and then open up our chains here and now uh, Massive is now in an instrument rack and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to turn down the volume on here to, I usually do about uh, negative 10 dBs and that's obviously it's going to be quieter but now what we're going to do is you can control click and do duplicate or you can just do command duplicate so um, we're going to do this quite a few times. So um, I usually just do this until my CPU just can't even handle it anymore. So and there's four of them. That's at about 60%. Um, let's see how many we can get away with here. So without playing it back, we're already at 20, 24%. That's about what we want. So <laughs> what we're going to do is uh, I usually take two of these, just pan one all the way to the right, pan all, one all the way to the left. Um, and if you want to get really creative with this, you can go in here and just make some subtle changes to the patch. Uh, like some of these things that I have that are being automated, just change them a little bit. Um, just subtle changes, nothing drastic. Uh, turn the dry and wet on here, turn the size. I'm going to clip it a little bit more and just making real little changes to each of these is going to give you a more full sound. So what we're doing is we're really just duplicating this one patch a lot of times uh, and this just makes things sound a lot more full. Um, almost everybody in dubstep and electro, I, this is kind of the sound that a lot of people have these days because it just makes sense because you're not going to get the sound that you want from just one simple patch, which I think is it's kind of a common misconception, um, but it's never just going to be one thing. It's multiple things in order to get you a really good sound. So 
Uh, let's try to play this one more time. Yeah, so not even close. So this is whether you get stuck with your CPU doing that uh, with just one sound or you know, you're in a session where you're almost finished or it's almost completed and your CPU just keeps you know, maxing out and you're like, crap, you know, I can't do anything with this song because the audio is dropping out. Uh, Ableton has this incredible feature where we can just control click and do freeze track. And there it goes. Hopefully you can still hear what I'm saying. I'm not sure. Usually Ableton cuts out the audio when you freeze a track. Um, but I think with ScreenFlow I have my built-in microphone recording me. Uh, so, and this is finished. Okay, so what just happened is that Ableton froze, froze this track here. And what that means is that it actually created an audio file of what we have going on here. So now when we play this back, our CPU is barely even moving. But if we listen to the sound now, because that actually sounds really good. Um, it sounds nice and full. What we can do is flatten and uh, that'll just make it a complete audio file. So you can do two things here. You can either, either flatten your tracks or you can just keep them frozen, which is a pretty good idea regardless because um, if it's frozen, it's not really using a CPU. I mean, it's still using more, which is weird why it does that. I'm not too sure why. But um, here's the advantage to uh, just keeping it frozen and not flattening it. If I make a new track and a new MIDI track. So if I option click on this little guy here, on this clip, if I drag it into audio, we have the audio. If I option click on the exact same clip and drag it to MIDI, we have the MIDI. So this kind of gives you the best of both worlds and really blends MIDI and audio together. So if you can, like I said, you know, when we when we actually flatten this, uh, it's gonna free up some CPU. So it's kind of up to you what you want to do. But this is a great way to, as you see, you know, pushing your CPU as far as you can, maxing out your CPU on one sound, which is a big deal. That's what a lot of guys do. Um, a lot of the good. I know Noisia has done that for years, and that's why their sounds are just so awesome. Uh, so. Push your CPU as much as you can, freeze, flatten, do all that stuff. And usually from here, I take, you know, I take the audio and I bring it into the arrangement view and start slicing it and stretching it, warping it, and doing all that. So I hope this tip helps you guys out. Uh, keep being creative, and we'll see you next time.